Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Ah, uh, okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, so let's just start off um, with this P5 Advanced Performance Management Webinar. Uh, my name is Lukman Rafiq and I'm the tutor for this paper, Advanced Performance Management. Um, this is going to be a five-day session uh, with three-hour session each day, expanding over a period of five days, a total of 15 hours, where we'll be going through the entire advanced performance management. My objective is going to be that I would make this advanced performance management webinar to be very exam focused, to be very much, uh, to be very much exam focused. We'll practice many examination questions and we'll try to discuss as many areas of the syllabus as possible. So before we proceed, I could just have a quick overview of what is actually included in this APM syllabus. Um, you would have already seen this thing that uh, the connection of this paper APM with the other papers, it's actually available over here. Um, one of them is it has got a connection with this uh, F5 performance management. This is this F2, this is the old version of P1 and P3, and this is the P5 itself. Okay, so this is this is basically uh, what it is. You would understand this thing that a lot of students, when you attempt the paper F5, this F5 paper is approximately 50% to 60% of the paper is calculation based. 50 to 60% of the paper is computation based. The next thing is, but when it comes to this P5 paper, you would hardly find around 10% to 15% of the computation in this specific examination. 70, 80 to 85% of the examination is 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 theoretical is application based the pass rates for the paper p5 are unfortunately very low they're between this 30 percent to 35 percent that's what the pass rates have been in the in this in this p5 paper and the major reason for this specific pass rate is that the students inability to understand the questions requirement. The students inability to understand the question requirements that has been one of the things that has ultimately led to students failing in this P5 paper. So what we would be doing is we would be focusing upon, um, we would be focusing upon uh, the examination questions, we would be focusing upon the requirements of the question, and then we would be discussing about this uh, specific uh, papers, past papers question. Now, I'm going to move forward um, and I'm going to discuss about few things. First of all, if I could have a quick discussion about what performance management is and what performance measurement is. Yeah, I would really appreciate if you people could participate that what is performance management? What is performance measurement? Yeah, if I could have a quick, uh, if I could have a quick answer from you people, what is performance management? What is performance measurement?
Ah, I don't see any participation yet. Okay, measurement is interpreting. There is one answer which is Nina, Prite, Tasbiha. We have got various answers where it says that measurement is interpreting and feigning metrics, management and deciding what CSF and KPI are needed. Okay. There's another answer. It says performance measurement, you are only evaluating performance. Okay. We have got one more answer, which is performance management. It is the system and methods by which the organization is run and its performance is organized. Okay. Uh, okay. There are multiple things that we have got in here. Okay. There is something that is uh, now. Okay. So it's really pleasing to see the way you people have contributed. Let me actually talk about it. It's really pleasing to see the way you people have contributed. You see, remember, um, if I explain to you this performance management, so I'll explain to you the performance management by telling you that assume that you are running your own business. And when you are running your own business, what actually happens is you are responsible for every single thing that happens with that specific business whether that be the production of the goods whether that be the marketing of those goods whether that be the sale of those goods whether that be the finance department of that specific entity whether that be the customers of that business whether that be the supplier of those business whether it be the government organization whether it being the community, whether it being your HR department, your IT department, etc., 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 every single the whole supply chain, every single aspect of that business. Let me repeat: every single aspect of that business, you are actually responsible for managing every single aspect of that business. How would you actually manage every single aspect of that business? So you would make sure you would make sure that whoever is involved in the supply chain of your business, whether that be the supplier, whether that be the transporter, whether that be any specific authority, et cetera, et cetera, you stay connected to them. You would make sure that the production of the goods is actually up to the mark. You would make sure that the goods that you produce you will make sure that the goods that you produce, they are up to the mark. You'd make sure that you market your goods, you'd market your product, you'd market your services in an appropriate manner. You'd make sure that your business's sales go up. You'd make sure that the finances are appropriately managed, whether that be the liquidity, whether that be the investment, etc., etc. You'd make sure that your customers are happy. You'd make sure that you've got a good and a strong relationship with your suppliers. You'd make sure that you meet the government requirement, you meet the compliance requirement, everything. You'd make sure that the community that which you operate, the community who is actually impacted by your business is not affected. You'd make sure that your business's HR operates appropriately, whether that be the hiring of the staff, whether that be the training of the staff, whether that be the rewards of the staff, et cetera, et cetera. You'd make sure that your IT infrastructure is maintained in a proper manner. So when we talk about the concept of performance management, so I always explain to the students that if you have to understand what a performance management is, so you need to understand as if you are running your own business. If you are running your own business, so every single aspect of that business, you are responsible for that. And you would make sure that every single aspect of that business operates in a proper manner. You'd make sure that every single aspect of that business actually moves forward, that aspect of the business grows. That is what you're going to make sure. So when we talk about the concept of performance management, so the concept of performance management is that, that you are simply running a business and you are ensuring that every single aspect which is used in order to measure, in order to run that business, that is actually going to be managed properly. That is what is going to be considered as performance management.
Now, similarly, when we talk about the concept of performance measurement, a lot of the students have actually given an answer. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to say that what happens is the performance measurement is part of management. The performance measurement is part of management. What do we mean by measurement? Measurement is simply quantifying performance. Measurement is simply quantifying performance. What is it? It is simply quantifying performance. It's actually giving a value to the performance. So basically what happens is that a very important thing that you need to keep in mind whenever we are going to be talking about the performance management, and that is basically what gets measured gets done. What gets measured gets done. And this is the basic concept on which the entire performance management is based upon, which is basically that, that basically what happens is if you have to run an organization, if you have to ensure that every single aspect of the organization gets done, so you need to make sure that you start measuring. You need to make sure that you start measuring. Once you start measuring them, then obviously those things, they actually get done. Okay, so basically when we talk about this performance management, there is an important thing which is you need to understand what gets measured gets. That is whatever things you are going to be focusing upon, whatever things you'll be measuring, ultimately those things would get done. Now, I am going to stop for five minutes as there is this some technical fault due to which a lot of students are having an issue with respect to the sound. So our IT team is getting that fixed. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for five minutes till 4.20 p.m. just for our IT team to get it fixed.
okay those of you who are actually able to listen to the sound please wait a bit uh, the reason being that uh, the it team is getting it fixed so as soon as the it team gets it fixed we'll resume Yeah, is everyone able to hear me? Yeah, is everyone able to listen to me? Yeah, am I audible now? Okay, those who are having problems. I think uh, good enough. Seems like that uh, the problem has been uh, resolved, hopefully. Hopefully the problem has been resolved, seems like. Okay, so perfect. Now uh, we are going to start discussing this. Um, first of all, I think the fault has been resolved now. Uh, so I'm going to go back to where I started off uh, because uh, unfortunately the momentum got disturbed a bit. So I'm going to get back my momentum from where, where I actually started off now. Uh, let's just start discussing. The first thing is that I talked about the performance management and I talked about performance measurement. I asked you people a question that what performance management is, what performance management is. You people started giving me an answer about performance management and performance measurement. And I told you people that what performance management is, is that uh, you can think of running a business. You can think of running a business. When you can think of running a business, so how do we usually run a business? Whenever we run a business, what happens is uh, we have to look after every single aspect of that business, whether that be whether that be the supply chain, whether that be the production, whether that be the marketing, the sales, finances, customer support, supplier, government, etc., etc., etc. Every single aspect of the business. I'm repeating every single aspect of the business. You have to ensure that that is operating properly. So when you have to understand what performance management is, let me repeat, when you have to understand what performance management is, you have to think, you have to assume as if you are running your own business and whatever aspects that you have to manage of running a business, all those aspects actually constitute a performance management. And then I told you people that when we talk about performance measurement, so remember measurement is a subset of management measurement is part of management measurement is part of management now when it is part of management so what actually happens is that uh, generally speaking what happens with respect to this uh, measurement is that when it is part of this management let me repeat So ultimately what happens is measurement means it's quantifying performance. Measurement means quantifying performance. How would you quantify the performance? We are going to discuss that. So measurement actually means it's quantifying the performance. It's assigning a value to the performance of the organization. And why do we assign a value to the organization's performance? Because of this very important phrase, which is what gets measured gets done. That is, if you are going to start measuring things, if you are going to start measuring things, ultimately they are going to get done. If you are going to start measuring the things, ultimately those things are going to get done. Okay, 
so this is basically a general introduction about this performance management and performance measurement i'm going to bit i'm going to move a bit forward and discuss further the next aspect of this performance management is that uh, you need to understand a performance measurement hierarchy you need to understand performance measurement hierarchy now what exactly do you mean by this performance measurement hierarchy let's just try to understand this thing um first of all if i talk about this performance management measurement hierarchy so you need to understand that how an organization operates you see if you would look at any specific organization you would find that at the top of the organization is its vision then what happens is then you've got the mission statement and then after the mission what happens is the third thing is the strategy then what happens is the goals and the objectives and after these goals and objectives you've got the critical success factor which is also termed as CSF. And then after the CSF, which is the critical success factor, you've got another thing, which is going to be considered as the KPIs, which is also termed as key performance indicator, which is also termed as key performance indicator. Now, so what I'm going to explain to you people is, you see, my objective is I am not directly going to rush onto the exam questions today. I am not going to directly rush onto the examination questions today. My objective is that I set the tone, I set the base. Once the base is set, I am going to go on doing the examination question. I don't want to rush. I want you people to actually be with me to try and understand the whole performance management. Now, see, let's try to understand this. This is a performance measurement hierarchy that I have drawn in front of you. Now, what exactly do you mean by this performance measurement hierarchy? Let's try to understand. The first aspect of this performance measurement is that for every organization that is established, there is a vision. There is a vision. What do we mean by the vision? The vision is ultimate goal. The vision is the ultimate objective. The vision actually tells you the purpose for which this specific organization exists. The purpose of existence. So that is generally considered to be your vision. The vision is translated into the mission. The vision is translated into the mission. And what exactly do you mean by the mission of the organization? The mission actually tells you how You will achieve your vision how you will achieve your vision when we talk about the mission the mission is actually how you achieve your vision and generally speaking whatever things that are discussed with respect to the mission is uh, what we do uh, for whom and how Generally speaking, the mission statement of any specific organization it actually answers these three questions, which is what you do as an organization and for whom do you do? And at the same time, how you actually do it, how you actually do it. So these are the three major things which are actually covered up in your specific mission statement. So whenever we talk about the mission of any specific organization, these are the three things that are covered in the mission statement.
Okay. So what happens is the first aspect of it is the vision, which is the ultimate goal of the organization. Then you've got a mission, which is, uh, which is, which actually tells you that how you will achieve your vision. The mission is statements generally answer three questions, which is what you do uh, for whom and at the same time, how. And then we have got the strategy goals and the objectives. What are these strategies goals and the objectives? That is basically the strategy covers the course of action. The strategy covers the course of action that you would take in order to achieve your mission. Let me repeat the strategy tells you the course of action that you would take in order to achieve your mission. And then you've got the goals and the objectives. What exactly do you mean by the goals and the objectives? The goals and the objectives is actually splitting your strategy into the short term goals, into the short term targets, into the short term things that actually need to be done. So I repeat, whenever we talk about any specific organization, what happens is this is how an organization operates. Ultimate goal is there. Then there is a mission, which is, which is something that tells you how you would achieve your vision. Then there is a course of action that's being taken. And in order to achieve that course of action, there are various goals, short term goals, short term objectives that are being set. And then what happens is a very important thing comes in to play and that is termed as CSF and that is termed as a KPI. So basically what happens is when we talk about the CSF and the KPI, what exactly are these CSF? What exactly are these KPI? Let's try to have a discussion about it. When we talk about the critical success factor, the critical success factor are the things you must excel at. The critical success factors are the things that you must excel at. Now, what exactly do you mean by this critical success factor? Let me take you through a few of the things pertaining to the critical success factor. Let me take you through a few of the things pertaining to the critical success factor. It says the critical success factors are those elements of organizational activity, which is central to its future success. The key to succeed, the key to success. The critical success factors may change over time and may include items such as product quality, employee attitudes, manufacturing flexibility, brand awareness. Now, so generally speaking, if I could summarize that if you have to achieve your ultimate vision, ultimate goal, ultimate objective, then what happens is an organization should be able to achieve its critical success factor. So critical success factor, which is the CSF, it is the things you must excel at. The things you must excel at. That is what is going to be considered as your critical success. What? The things that you must excel at. Now, let's move a bit forward and talk about that what are the sources of those critical success factors or what are the different types of the critical success factors. <clears throat> okay, so the four basic types of critical success factors are your industry critical success factor. That's number one. It actually depends upon the industry in which you are operating in. Like, for example, if I talk about an airline industry. So the majorly the airline industry, the critical success factor is on time flights. The timely flights is going to be one of the critical success factors. You talk about the education industry, so you probably have the pass rates that is going to be one of the critical success factor for the education sector. You've got the fast food restaurant. So what is going to be there? This fast food restaurant, the critical success factor is basically the quick processing of foods, the quick processing of order. So let me repeat. That what exactly do you mean by the critical success factor? A critical success factor actually means the things that we must excel at. How do we get to know about our critical success factors? So there could be multiple factors, multiple things through which the critical success factors could be established. 
the first one of them is the industry in which you are operating in the industry actually tells you that what your critical success factors are going to be Yeah, is everyone okay with this? So one of the sources of the critical success factor is the industry in which you are operating in. The second one is the strategy that your business has followed. Now, what exactly do you mean by the strategy that the business has followed? Let's just start discussing that. So basically, you can have different types of a strategy, which is the cost leadership model, you can have a strategy which could be a niche player. You could be, uh, you could be having a strategy of cost leadership. You could be a niche player. There could be different types of strategies that you are choosing. Now, when you are operating with a, a strategy of cost leadership, then your critical success factor is going to be cost reduction. Your critical success factor is going to be the waste elimination. These are the various things that you would have to talk about. Let me repeat. These are the various things that you would have to talk about. Like what? Cost reduction, waste elimination, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. These are the various things that you, as somebody who is pursuing the strategy of cost leadership, has to follow. A niche player. A niche player's key critical success factor is, is innovation. For example, take an example of Apple. Apple has lost its market to Samsung, has lost its market to Huawei, has lost its market now recently to Xiaomi also. The Xiaomi has become the third largest seller in the world with the results of the third quarter. So how is it losing out? Apple had established itself to be a niche market player. It's losing out. Why? Because it is not as fast on innovation as compared to the other ones. Yeah, is everyone okay with this? Okay, next. Next is your environmental CSS. The environment in which you are operating, the economic environment, the technological changes, they could ultimately lead you towards the CSS. Now let's try to understand. Due to this COVID-19, the businesses, everything went, uh, the lockdowns happened across the globe. And since the lockdowns happened across the globe, this was something that was an environmental change that was taking place. So if this was an environmental change that was taking place, then what, what did this environmental change require a business to do? This specific environmental change, what it required a business to do was that the business could switch to the alternates. The business could switch to the online solutions. 
almost every specific industry move towards the online virtual solution whether that be the whether that be the manufacturers producers education providers every retail outlet had to open up its online delivery the restaurants closed down their deliveries were open those restaurants who were not ready for the online they had to operate online otherwise the business is winded up right now so you've got another critical success factor which is the environment also leads to the certain critical success factor then you've got a temporal critical success factor and what exactly do we mean by the temporal critical success factor it's actually depending upon the needs on the organization changes that are presently taking place so in those circumstances in those situations the things that you must excel at are going to be considered as temporal critical success factor so now let me repeat we are talking about the performance management hierarchy and with respect to this performance measurement hierarchy we have talked about this thing that any specific organization what happens is it starts off with the vision moves to the mission the strategy is there the goals and objectives are set and the ultimate thing is your critical success factors these are the things that you must excel at if you have to succeed as an organization if you have to flourish as an organization these are the things you must excel at and what are these things these things could be through the industry in which you are operating these could be because of the strategy that your business is pursuing these could be because of the operating environment of your entity and these could be because of the temporal factors which are having an impact which are having an impact on the entity so all of these could actually lead to an entity having a different set of critical success factors <laughs> so is everyone okay with this now let's move a bit forward and discuss further um there are most typical examples of most typical most typical critical success factors for an organization but again i'm telling you that it could be same for many organization and it could be different depending upon the circumstances depending upon the things depending upon the situation depending upon the conditions okay let's move a bit forward so i told you people that when it comes to an organization this is how the performance measurement operates so now basically when we are measuring the performance so we need to know that what are the critical success factors of the organization because these critical success factors would ultimately lead to achievement of vision these critical success factors would lead to fulfillment of the mission and how well has an organization how well has an organization uh, been able to uh, achieve these critical success factors that is actually measured using the ke performance indicators which is also termed as the kpis so when we talk about the performance measurement we always say that what gets measured gets done so 
how do we actually actually we see this what gets measured gets done so what exactly do you mean by this that is how well an organization has been able to fulfill its critical success factor how well it has been able to achieve them that is all going to be decided by the key performance indicators we are going to measure the performance using the kpis the results of these kpis would tell us that how well an entity has been able to fulfill how well an entity has been able to achieve its critical success factors <clears throat> okay now let's move a bit forward and discuss further now when we try to measure the performance let me repeat when we try to measure the performance we talk about the kpis the key performance indicators so how exactly can you measure the performance of an organization so the performance of the organization could be measured using the financial performance indicators and using the non financial performance indicators now what exactly do you mean by measuring using financial performance indicators when we talk about the financial performance indicators the financial performance indicators would actually mean that you have to talk about the financial state you would have to measure the performance using the financial statements and when we talk about the non financial performance indicators that means that you would be measuring the performance using um, other than financial state using information which is other than financial state now what exactly are these financial performance indicators what exactly are these non financial performance indicators so i am going to have a feedback from you people what happens is when we talk about the financial performance indicators the financial performance indicators are generally classified into the different categories which is the profitability ratios number 2 is the liquidity ratios the number 3 is the efficiency ratios number 4 is the gearing ratios and number 5 are the investor ratios so if you could have a quick if you could have a quick suggestions from you people uh, i would want to know that what could be the various profitability ratios that we can use to measure the performance and and what are the formulas for them okay now it would be great to have feedback from you people good good i'm getting answers from you people this is good you just answer i'm going to write down in 2 minutes just talk about profitability nothing else it would be great if you could give the formula also
Okay, good enough. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for your uh, inputs into it. I would try to pick up a few of the unique ratios or a few of the commonly used ratio that we would be using. Uh, it could be number one is the GP margin. You could use NP margin also. You could use the operating profit margin also. These are the three different types of margin ratios. So the GP is GP upon sales. The NP ratio is NP upon sales. The operating profit margin is PBIT upon the sales. So one of them is basically the margin ratios, the gross profit margin and so on and so forth. If you move a bit forward, so what happens is you have got the return on capital employed rows. How do we calculate it? We calculate it using the PBIT divided by capital employed. Okay, next we have got this. There is another one which is called the economic value added. Okay, what else? Uh, let me see the unique type of ratios. NP margin, GP margin, etc. Okay, now we've got EVA. The similar type of ratio that we use is also called residual income. Um, okay, a very good one. Residual income or the return on investment, which is more of a common type of a ratio like rows. There is another ratio which is called total shareholder return. The TSR ratio. How exactly do we calculate the EVA? I'm going to discuss it later on. We have got a whole topic on EVA. Uh, what is this total shareholder return? So let me explain to you this total shareholder return right now uh, before I move forward. Um, if I talk about this total shareholder return. The total shareholder return, which is also known as TSR. Now, um, basically what happens is think from the perspective of an investor. Let me repeat, think from the perspective of an investor. As an investor, what would happen is you would invest in a company. So you would invest in a company in the form of principal by acquiring or owning the shares. Let's say you purchase them for 100,000. What happens is at the end of the year, the value of these shares has become, at the end of the year, the value of these shares has become $110,000. Similarly, what happens is there is a dividend which is being paid by the entity and the dividends that are being paid are of $5,000. So resultingly, an investor is getting $15,000. If an investor is getting $15,000 divided by $100,000, which is the original principal, that means he's getting a return of 15%. That means he's getting a return of 15%. This is a total shareholder return. What is it? It's a total shareholder. Return. How do you get it? You get it in the form of capital gain and in the form of dividends. This is considered to be total shareholder return. I hope everyone is okay with this. Okay, now the next aspect is the liquidity ratio. So I need suggestions from you people for the liquidity ratios now.
Yeah, I need liquidity ratios along with formula. I'm getting suggestions, good enough. It's really pleasing to see this. It's really pleasing to see this, that you people are actively participating. You people are actively contributing. Okay, no, 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 no. Interest cover is not a liquidity ratio. Uh, Mr. Subin John, no, no, it's not. Okay, I've got many suggestions. So let me just see if I could also have a different type of suggestion from anyone. Okay, now, amongst the suggestions that I've got, um, let me first tell you the liquidity measures the ability to repay debts as they become due so one of them is the current ratio which is simply the current assets divided by the current liability there is another one which is termed as a quick ratio which is current asset less inventory divided by the current liability, which is current assets less the inventory divided by the current liability. Now, when we talk about this quick ratio and the current ratio, um, why exactly are they important? So they tell you the ability of an entity to repay the debt as they become due. They tell you about the ability of an entity to repay the debts as they become due. Okay, now, what next is there? Let's talk about it. We can talk about the efficiency ratio. Now, can you people guide me? What do we mean by efficiency ratios? What could be the different type of efficiency ratios that we can go for? Yes, please. Okay, so the efficiency or they are also termed as utilization of resources. Efficiency, they're also termed as utilization of resources ratios. What could be the different efficiency ratios? Uh, we've got receivable collection period. What do we have got? We have got receivable collection period. We have got receivable collection period. We have got inventory holding period. We have got inventory holding period. We have got payables payment period. So these are the three different types of efficiency ratio that you would come across. And another efficiency ratio, let me tell you that ratio. That's actually going to be termed as what? That is termed as the working capital cycle. Okay. It's receivables divided by sale into whatsoever, 365 or whatsoever. 
here we have got inventory divided by cogs here we have got payable divided by cogs into 365 and how do we calculate the working capital cycle it's the inventory days plus receivable days minus payable days what is it it's actually the working capital cycle is inventory days plus receivable days minus the payable days okay is that okay to everyone so when you're going to be talking about this working capital cycle this is what the working capital cycle is going to be now um i need an explanation from any one of you that what do you mean by working capital cycle why is this working capital cycle important yeah can anyone give an explanation what does working capital cycle means and why is it important should it be long? Should it be short? Okay, great, 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 great. Um, I could, I am really happy to see this level of participation. Thank you very much for making it a very uh, good and a participative session. Thank you very much. So, with respect to the working capital cycle, we know it tells us the time it takes to recover. The time it takes to recover a $1 invested in the working capital. We know the time it takes to recover the $1 invested in the working capital. And the shorter it is, the better it is. The shorter it is, the better it is for the organization. Okay, can I have two, three gearing ratios? Okay, we have got one of them to be the debt to equity ratio. We have got one which is debt upon debt plus equity. And we have got a third one, which is going to be interest cover ratio, which is calculated like this PBIT upon interest expense, which is calculated like this PBIT upon interest expense. Okay, now. Uh, can you people help me identify a few investor ratios, please? Yeah, a few of the investor ratios, please.
okay we have got many suggestions i would like to use different different ratios so we have got um eps we have got dividend yield we have got earnings yield and we have got the dividend cover now i would be really happy to know that how do you calculate dividend yield how do you calculate earnings yield yeah i would want to know from you people how do you calculate dividend yield how do we calculate earnings yield Yeah, come on, please. What's the formula for it? I'm hope I'm hoping that you people are not googling it right now. I'm hoping that you are telling me. from your own um, knowledge now anyways uh, there was there is one student um, who has actually mentioned the formula for the eps unfortunately he has mentioned pbit divided by number of shares but it has to be pat the profit after tax divided by number of shares that's what the formula is so that's what you have to use the dividend yield is dividend per share divided by earning per share or the other way around of calculating it is dividends divided by the pat the other way around is dividends divided by pat now let's move a bit forward when we talk about earnings yield earnings yield is what it's eps divided by the share price and dividend cover dividend cover is profit after tax divided by dividends or other way around when you are going to be talking about the dividend cover it's simply going to be what it's simply going to be the eps divided by the dps so basically what we have done up to now is that we have determined that if you have to measure the performance of any organization then in order to measure the performance of the organization you can measure them using financial performance indicators you can measure them using non financial performance indicators and what exactly are these financial performance indicators what exactly are these non financial performance indicators so the financial performance indicators are those which are based on financial factors okay good enough so we have gone through this aspect of the financial performance indicators now what we need to do is that we need to talk about non financial performance indicators so for these non financial performance indicators i would really appreciate input from you people that first of all
how can we classify the non financial performance indicators what are the different heads what are the different categories that we could classify these non financial performance indicators in yeah can i get some input from you people please okay okay go ahead please more <clears throat> okay so we have it customer we have it quality we have got uh, market related we have got the production related and we have got learning and innovation okay good enough ah oh, okay um we have got business processes related also okay good enough good enough now so we have got a general idea about what it is now let's try to have an understanding so if i talk about these different customer quality market related production related learning and innovation let's let's get on to this anything else that you can suggest please yeah anything else that you people can suggest with respect to it please okay now so let's talk about if we talk about the classification of the non financial performance indicator you people have done that you people have now classified the non financial performance indicators into the various categories and we have discussed that now so if i could get some inputs some suggestion from you people about the customer okay i've got this level of customer satisfaction i have got this complaint ratio okay repetitive customer which is also known as retention ratio um what else what else yeah what else is there positive reviews okay good enough so we have got ample amount of this customer related non financial performance indicator let me repeat we have got ample amount of customer related non financial performance indicators now let's move a bit forward and discuss further
quality yes <laughs> can i have quality related indicators can i have quality related performance indicators performance measures Okay, really happy to see the level of participation. This is mashallah, excellent. This is good. Um, so you've got number of rejects. You've got complaint ratio. You've got warranty claims. You've got sales returns. Then what else is there? Mm. Okay. Um, percentage of returns. Okay, what else? Um, ISO certification, because at times what happens is your quality is also detected by these certifications that you get. Um, rework cost as a percentage of total cost, okay. Okay, good enough, good enough, now. So this is basically going to be considered as what? This is going to be considered as the quality related issues, the quality related KPIs. Can I have suggestions on market? Yeah, can I have suggestions on market please? Good enough, good enough. Go ahead, go ahead, please. Um, Harishan, the market capitalization is not the right thing. Market capitalization has more to do with the shareholders' wealth. Okay, yes, share price. No, 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 no. Share price is in drummies, no. Okay, let me let me tell you now. When we talk about the market related, the market is the market in which you operate, the industry in which you operate. So it's basically you've got the market share. You've got the sales growth number of awards this is actually going to show your market competitiveness um okay yes the brand awareness but it becomes a very difficult thing to measure the brand awareness but anyways still okay We've got two more headings, two more classifications that you people have suggested. So can we just have production related things? Uh, John Mupa, yes, this is the right participation screen. Uh, well, production related, okay, yes, this is idle time, right, good enough.
साइकिल टाइम ओके ओके रिसोर्सेस सेव्ड Okay, now this is good enough. Lastly, if we could have learning and innovation quickly. Yeah, if we could have quick suggestions on learning and innovation. Okay, we've got training cost, number of staff trained, okay, number of patents registered, new products, okay, good enough. This is really good to see the way you people are participating. Okay, um, I might not take name of each and every student, but I'm reading, I'm going through your answers and it's more or less, if I can get a similar type of answer, I am actually incorporating them. Good enough. So what we have done is we have actually established the few non-financial performance indicators also. So if I could go back to where we started, we started off, with a performance measurement hierarchy. And I told you that what happens is an organization's top is the vision. And in order to achieve this vision, the things go on and on and on. And ultimately, it's the critical success factors that matter. Ultimately, it's the critical success factors that matter. And when you've got the critical success factors, Then what happens is there are these KPIs also. There are these KPIs also. And with respect to the KPIs, you've established that you can measure the performance using both financial and the non-financial performance indicators. Using what? Both financial performance indicators and the non-financial performance indicators. And we have gone through the financial performance indicators and we have also gone through the non-financial performance indicators.
Yeah, is that okay to everyone? Is anyone having any questions? Okay, there is a student who is saying that. Wait. Um, investment on new technologies. Yes, Harishan, that's learning and innovation. Dawal Bandi. Okay, thanks. Thanks, uh, Dawal. Uh, Emma Mensa, you say that kindly. Uh, can I know the formula of TSR, please? Yes, sure, why not? TSR actually tells you the total shareholder return. A shareholder can get the return in the form of capital gain. A shareholder can get the return in the form of dividend. Yeah, is everyone okay with this? Anyone having any questions, please? Yeah, anyone having any questions, please? <clears throat> okay. Learning rate factor yet it falls under the learning and innovation. Yeah, it falls under the learning and innovation. Okay, let's move a bit forward. Okay, now let's move a bit forward and discuss further. So we have got this. Now, important thing is that what are the non-financial performance indicators that we can always use? 
what are the non financial performance indicators that we can always use so i am going to tell you that with respect to the non financial performance indicators there are different models let me tell you that there are different models that exist so there are different models that exist which an organization can apply in order to measure the performance the good thing about these models is that these models don't only cover the non financial performance indicators but they also cover the financial performance indicators not only that they cover the non financial performance indicators but they also cover the financial performance indicators okay now so now what exactly are these models we are going to start discussing these models one by one uh, there are three major models that are part of your course one of them is called the balanced scorecard the other one of them is called building block model and the third one of them is called performance pyramid so what we are going to be doing is what we are going to be doing is we'll be discussing and we going through each one of these each one of these models one by one you have got this handout attached to this uh, specific window where you could find this specific handout and here the first model that i am going to be discussing will be the balanced scorecard okay so let's start discussing about the balanced scorecard the balanced scorecard is one of those models that was the first model uh, which was introduced with respect to the modern uh, performance measurement the balance scorecard actually defines four perspectives and what are those four perspectives that the balance scorecard defines the first perspective is termed as a financial perspective the second perspective is about the customer perspective the third perspective is about the internal business process and the fourth perspective is about learning and growth perspective the fourth perspective is about the learning and the growth perspective now let's just try to have an understanding that what exactly are they let's try to have a discussion so the balanced scorecard is one of those models that actually introduced the idea 
of measuring the performance in a balanced manner. Now, what exactly do we mean by measuring the performance in a balanced manner? So this actually means it's going to be a mixture of financial and non-financial. When we talk about measuring the performance in a balanced manner, this actually means it's going to be a mixture of financial and non-financial measures. Now, what exactly do you mean by this financial and non-financial measures? So you could see that this is the financial measure and all of these are the non-financial measures which is the balance scorecard told us that if you have to measure the performance of any organization, if you have to measure the performance of any organization, so what you need to do is that you need to consider these four perspectives. What are these four perspectives that you have to consider? The first perspective is the financial. You need to see What have we done for our shareholders? The first thing is, what have we done for our shareholders? Okay. Um, the student, uh, Anna, you are asking that when are we going to be attempting the exam question? Uh, Anna, don't worry, please let me set up the scene for you people. Then I'll make you do as many exam questions that you would have never done in a webinar. Don't worry. Just let me set up the scene for you people. John Mupa, you are mentioning that market. No, market is not uh, a perspective in the balance scorecard. Yes, there is a plausible relationship between this financial indicators and non-financial indicators, which I'm just going to indicate now. So basically the first thing is when we talk about the concept of the financial performance indicators, try to understand this with respect to the financial indicators, financial perspective, what we do is that the balance scorecard tells us that see what you have to do is you have to ensure you have to see what have you done for your shareholders. Now, how do we get to know our financial performance? It could be through the different ratios, the GP margin, the NP margin, the return on capital employed, the return on investment, the uh, share price, the EPS, et cetera, et cetera, all the investors, all the profitability, all ratios could be combined here. All profitability, all investor ratios could be combined here. The next thing is customer perspective. And what exactly do we mean by customer perspective? It's basically how do our customers see us? How do our customers see us? That what is the viewpoint of the customers about us? So what you need to do is that you need to measure your performance from the perspective of how the customers see your organization, which is probably you'd be measuring the customer satisfaction. You would be measuring the retention ratio. You would be measuring the repeat sales, the warranty claims, the complaints, etc, etc, etc. You'd be measuring all of them. So basically, the matrices that we discussed with respect to quality, the matrices that we discussed with respect to customers, all are going to be combined here. Okay, now what next is there? This is internal business process. 
again it's it's those things we must excel at that is simply your organization's critical success factors and i told you a bit earlier today that the critical success factor could be different for any specific organization they could arise from the industry the critical success factors could arise from the industry in which you are operating in the critical success factors could arise from the environment could arise from the uh, from the uh, strategy that you have opted as a business there could be multiple things so another aspect of the balance scorecard is that what you need to make sure is that the things that you must excel at how well have you performed with respect to those things now the next is basically the learning and the growth perspective and when we talk about the learning and growth perspective it's actually going to be when we talk about learning when we talk about growth so it's organizational learning it's organizational growth what is it it's going to be organizational learning it's going to be organizational growth is that okay so what you would do is that you would be measuring the learning and the growth of the organization of the employee that is what you would be doing now the important thing is how would we implement the important thing is how to implement balance score card in an organization the important thing is how exactly are you going to be implementing balance scorecard in an organization so let's try to have an understanding what happens is i repeat something that is basically you could see that there is this financial perspective ah uh, there is this customer there is this uh, internal business perspective there is this learning and growth and organizations when it learns when it grows so the major reason for that is they perform well with their internal business perspective that is they try to achieve their critical success factors and when they achieve these their customers become happy and when their customers become happy those customers reward them financially so ultimately it's actually a connection it's actually an interrelationship between all of these four aspects and the ultimate thing that we are trying to achieve is the vision of the organization to the various csf to the various missions and so on and so forth now what you need to be able to understand is that how do we implement the balance scorecard in any organization So in order to implement balance scorecard in any organization this is what you would do you would say perspective what you would do you would say perspective you would say objective you would say the performance indicator and you would say the target what perspective objective performance indicator and the target
Okay, now let's just see this thing. So what happens is that you would simply, the way you implement this balanced scorecard in any organization is, you simply say the first perspective, let's say financial. And you might say that one of the objective of this financial perspective is wealth maximization. The other objective is going to be the other objective is going to be let's say cost minimization i've just mentioned two of the objectives what one of them is the financial uh, perspective is there and with respect to the financial perspective i've mentioned about one of the objectives i've mentioned about another object let's think that there are two objectives The shareholders want to help. The shareholders want their wealth to be maximized. Plus, the management has adopted a cost leadership strategy. So, you would probably indicate introduce the performance indicator, which is EPS, share price. Maybe you would say the EPS should be $10. Maybe you would say that the share price should reach $100. The cost minimization is going to be like this. Cost per unit. The second one of them is going to be Percentage reduction in loss. So maybe you could set a target that the cost per unit should be 22. Maybe you could say that the percentage reduction in the loss could be 5%, things like that. So if you try to implement the balance scorecard in any organization, this is how you do it. Let me repeat. When we try to implement the balance scorecard, in any organization, this is how we do it. How do we do it? We simply take out the perspective. For each of the perspective, we can have different objects. And remember, these objectives should be aligned with your mission. Remember, these objectives should be aligned with your mission. And with the objective, you introduce indicators and then you set a target to your employees that look this is what you have to achieve and this thing would go on for each and everything you've got financial you've got the customer you've got the learning and growth you've got the internal business perspective you would follow the same strategy you would follow the same route for everything Yeah, is that okay to you people? Is that okay to you people? Is everyone okay with how the balance scorecard is implementing in any specific organization? Okay, any questions? Uh, well, that well, it's actually I've told you how the balance scorecard is. Emma, I've told you how balance scorecard is practically implemented. You set out target to your employees because without target you cannot operate. You have to set the target. Without targets you cannot operate. Ah uh, well, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I might not pronounce your name correctly. Uh, Gwen, Gwenla Benjamin. 
uh, your question is that is that how you present the answer when using this model in the exam uh, well it depends upon the question requirement so don't worry about the question requirement it's just that you have to wait for one day and let me get over let me set the scene for you people okay good enough so we are done with this balance scorecard which is one of the models uh, which is an important model with respect to the performance management so i'm going to take a short break uh, we've been studying for the past uh, more than one and a half hours now so i am taking a break uh, for 10 minutes and this is going to be a break till 6 5 pm pakistan time so if there are any questions you may ask um, also um, i am hoping that you people would have gotten um, uh, you would have gotten yourself added to the WhatsApp group. Just in case, if you are unable to add yourself to the WhatsApp group, you could message me on this number. You could message me on this number, I'll get you added. So let's have a break till 6, 5 p.m.
Okay. Um, so thank you very much, everyone, for waiting. Uh, I hope that you would have gotten fresh now. So let's start uh, off. Let's move a bit forward. Okay, I've got few questions which I'm going to answer first before I move forward. Um, okay, will you be discussing the exam structure as in what topics are tested in the 50 mark question and what topics are 25 mark question? Okay, there is a question by a student Ramiz and he's asking us that um will you be discussing the examination structure that what questions are examined in part a and what are examined in part b and so on and so forth so it means uh, there is no specific set pattern anything could be examined in part a anything could be examined in part b there is no specific set pattern which we could follow uh Murtada, you are being responded back in the group uh asma shahidan how about ev and transfer pricing will it be discussed or at this moment only about the performance pyramid and so and so so and so uh well uh you see uh asma uh i can just guide you about how my uh this whole webinar is going to be proceeding so today the day one we have got this uh, discussion of the performance measurement hierarchy and the various performance management models and then tomorrow we would have the exam practice questions on these models etc etc my target is to go through three questions the third day we would be discussing about this um, uh, divisionalization and transfer pricing and obviously when we would be discussing this, we'll be discussing the EVA, which is also the value-based management. And alongside, obviously, you'd have the questions. Then we would be discussing about the budgeting. And, uh, and miscellaneous areas. And last day, we would have the risk management. And we would have the risk and uncertainty. And then we would have the corporate failure. So these are the various things that we would be doing. These are the various things that we would be going through when we will be discussing them. So this is what we are going to be following the performance management hierarchy and the different models that are going to be part and parcel of the performance management hierarchy are going to be considered here. The exam practice questions, the divisionalization and transfer pricing, budgeting and miscellaneous activities, and then we would have the risk uh, and uncertainty and the corporate failures. Uh, okay. okay uh, so don't worry i'll make sure that that you you end up loving this paper of uh, apm don't worry about it inshallah you try our best you do the maximum possible effort that we can now let's move a bit forward and try to discuss further okay the next model that i'm going to be discussing is the It's the Fitzgerald and Moon building block model. What is it? It's the Fitzgerald and Moon building block model. Um, you have got this specific building block model in front of you. Now, what exactly do you mean by This fits Gerald and Moon building block model. <clears throat> now, um, basically, what happens is
um the building block model is another model which discusses about how the performance can be managed in a balanced manner in a in a in a, in a, in a, in a, in a manner that various aspects of the performance are covered what this building block model does is it defines three dimen three three blocks one of them is a dimension block the other one of them is a standard block and the third one of them is a measures or the rewards block now what exactly do you mean by this dimension blocks so when we talk about the dimension block the concept of this dimension block is that the dimension block actually refers to the dimension block actually refers to the areas for which performance is to be measured so the areas for which the performance is to be measured so these are the dimensions against which the performance should be measured one two three four five and six so these are the areas against which the performance should be measured then there is this standards block what do we have we've got a standard block now what exactly do you mean by having a standard block so the standard block actually tells you that these standards should be followed while setting while measuring performance or while setting targets and then you've got the measures or the rewards block you would find few places it's termed as a rewards block at few places you would find them to be measures so this actually tells you that how how the measures must be that's what it tells you that how the measures must be so when we talk about i'm repeating when we talk about this specific uh, building block model so you need to understand that there are three specific things with respect to the building block model one of them is a dimension block the other one of them is a standard block and the third one of them is a measures or the rewards block now so what happens is the first thing that you need to do with respect to the application of this building block model is that you have to measure the performance using these six dimensions what you need to do is that you have to measure the performance using six dimensions okay now so the first one of them is actually termed as the competitiveness now what exactly do we mean by the competitiveness so the competitiveness actually measures the market position of an entity the competitiveness actually measures the market position of an entity uh you can have different measures for this competitiveness but this is something that you need to understand that this is one of the dimensions that we have to follow so what exactly do you mean by this competitiveness if i talk about the competitiveness the competitiveness could be measured using the market share the competitiveness could be measured using the um, revenue growth the competitiveness could be measured using the using the brand image so these are the few things that you could use in order to measure the competitiveness of an entity that how competitive how well an entity is that's what you could do
Now, the next thing is the financial performance that how we have performed for the shareholders. So how we have performed for the shareholders. So you would be talking about this, the financial performance. So when you are going to be talking about the financial performance, so you would actually be seeing that with respect to the uh, with respect to the financial performance, the various ratios that could be introduced could be the share price, could be the profitability ratios like the GP, NP. It could be the earning per share. It could be the total shareholder return. It could be the return on capital employed. It could be the return on equity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. These are the different types of ratios that could be introduced in order to measure the financial performance. The third thing is the quality of the service. Then there is this flexibility, then resource utilization and innovation. So if I talk about the quality of service, so you do understand that everything which is the uh, which is the warranty claims. All of the aspects that we discussed with respect to the customer satisfaction, uh, they are also going to be covered under this specific quality area. Then you've got what you've got. Um, so you've got the warranty claims, you've got the customer satisfaction, you've got the rework cost, etc., etc. All of that is going to be considered as the quality related cost. All of that is going to be considered as a quality related cost. Now, what next is there? The next thing is about the flexibility. When we talk about the flexibility, so the flexibility is majorly your adaptability to change. Flexibility is your adaptability to change. So the flexibility could be measured using the speed of service. The flexibility could be measured using the responsiveness to change. These are generally going to be the indicators of your flexibility. These are generally going to be indicators of your flexibility. Then what happens is there is something which is termed as resource utilization. And when we talk about the resource utilization, the resource utilization is basically how you utilize the resource. How you utilize the resource, it could be the idle time, it could be the various other ratios that we have specifically used like receivable collection period and so on and so forth. And lastly, which is about the innovation. The innovation is majorly about. When you talk about the innovation, it's majorly uh, the number of new products launch. The innovation is majorly. It's a number of new products launch. Um, it's going to be that investments in R and D, etc., etc. This is all going to be measuring your innovation. Let me repeat, this is all going to be measuring your innovation. So when we apply the building block model, what does it say? The building block model tells us that you have to measure the performance of the entity using these six dimensions. The building block model says that you have to measure the performance of the entity using these six dimensions. And when you have to measure the performance of the entity using these six dimensions, then you have to make sure that you follow these standards. 
let me repeat, then you have to make sure that you follow these standards. What are the standards that you would be following? So it says the standard of ownership, the standards of achievability, and the standard of fairness, which is also termed as equity. Now, what exactly do you mean by the standard of ownership, which is, which simply actually means that if you are measuring the performance of any person, any manager, any department, any staff, whatsoever that is, then obviously you would be introducing a performance measure. Like for example, you are measuring the competitiveness and you're measuring the competitiveness using a ratio of market share so this specific concept of the standard of ownership tells you that the person whose performance you are measuring the performance of the person who you are measuring should own this performance measure should say that okay i'm ready okay i'm okay with this specific performance measure that's what the concept of this market share is Is that okay now? Now, next, the next situation is, it says the ownership is there, then you've got the achievability. Achievability actually refers to this situation that, when we talk about the achievability, so this actually means the targets that you set. The achievability actually means that the targets that you set those targets should be achievable, should be realistic, should not be unrealistic targets. And then you have got the fairness in setting targets or we call it equity. You have got fairness in setting targets or we call it equity. Now what exactly do you mean by fairness in setting targets or the fairness which is going to be considered as equity? Let's try to understand. Let's try to explain to you people. So when we talk about the fairness of the equity, this would actually means that, that what happens is, I'll just give you an example. Assume that you are an entity which sells ice cream. You've got regions within your country and those regions could be categorized into the four categories. One of them is a cold region. The one of them is going to be a very hot region. The third one of them is something, I mean, this is cold and urban. This is hot and urban. This is a rural area, which is again a cold area, which is rural. And this is a rural area, which is hot. You've got these four different types of regions in your country and the population. Uh, surprisingly, the population of each specific location is 10 million people, 10 million people, 10 million people, 10 million people. Now, can I, can I, can I have an input from you people? A company is selling ice creams. A company is selling ice creams. Which of the region would have the highest ice cream sales? Which of the region would have the highest ice cream sales? yeah good 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 hot and urban this is the region which is going to have the highest ice cream sales so if i if i set the target of let's say um 1000 sales per day 1000 per day 1000 per day 1000 per day so if i'm setting a target in this manner that means I am promoting equity. I am promoting, sorry, I am promoting equality. I am promoting equality. And 
it does not say equality it says equity fairness this is not fair this is not fair this is not fair maybe you could set a target of let's say 250 a day say 50 a day say 300 a day something like that that makes it an equitable target settlement is that okay so basically what happens is when you are going to be target setting the target settings you have to ensure that you comply with their standards what do you have to do you have to make sure that you comply with their standards the next one of them is the measures these are the three things that you have to follow while setting the measures what are those three things that you have to that you have to ensure let's discuss let's talk about them there has to be a clarity the motivation and the controllability now try to understand i told you that this is more of a rewards block this is more of a rewards block so if this is more of a rewards block then what happens is the clarity needs to be there that is the reward should be clearly defined there should be no gray areas there should be no thin lines it has to be clear the clarity has to be there the second one of them is motivation they should be motivating they should be encouraging if you are setting rewards which are not encouraging that is going to be of no point the next thing is controllability which actually means that you have to make sure that the rewards are given or the people are deprived of the rewards based upon controllable factors based upon controllable factors that is something that you would have to keep in mind Yeah, is that okay to everyone? So if I talk about this performance pyramid, the performance pyramid is one of those models. The, the sorry, this building block model. This building block model tells you that an entity has to measure the performance using these six dimensions of competitiveness, financial quality of service, flexibility, resource utilization, and innovation. and the targets that need to be set for these dimensions should meet these standards of ownership achievability and equity and the fulfillment of targets should be rewarded with the rewards which are clearly defined which are motivating and which are linked to the controllable factors is that okay to everyone yeah is everyone okay with this you have any questions with respect to this uh building block model please anyone having any questions please okay what do i mean by the controllable factor let me try to explain to you 
when i talk about this controllable factor so assume that you have got a sales director and you have linked his reward to the profit of the organization is it okay? is it is it is it an appropriate way is it a proper connection a sales director reward is based upon the profit Yes, my my question to you, uh, sales director's reward is linked to the profit. Is it correct? No. Okay. Right. No, uh, Benjamin. No, the sales director is unable to control the profit because there are expenses involved which are not under his control. his reward should be linked to the sales is that okay to know now so that is actually what we mean by controllable factor okay there are questions that how do we prepare for a building block model wait till tomorrow i'll get through the maximum questions on this building block model don't worry about it okay good enough now well usually it's a very basic concept that the examiner will ask you to prepare building block model maybe even if you get a question to explain the building block model it would be hardly 7 to 8 mark question even that is a history now hardly you could get a 4 to 5 mark question on this So is everyone okay with this? Okay, perfect. Now, the next thing is there are going to be few things which I need to discuss uh, before I could proceed, which is about the characteristics of service compared to goods. Now, uh, basically, what happens is. this specific building block model the building block model was originally introduced for service oriented organization let me repeat the building block model was originally introduced for the service oriented organization now why was there a need to have a different model for the service oriented organization the reason is that a service organization have got few specific characteristics let me repeat there are specific characteristics that a service organization has as compared to a manufacturing organization what exactly are they the key features i have mentioned four here they could be five uh, one of them is the intangibility the second one of them is the heterogeneity the third one of them is called simultaneity fourth is perishability and the fifth one which is not mentioned here but some of the past examination questions do mention and that's actually about ownership okay now the next thing is if we talk about it it's going to be like this that first thing is a service is intangible cannot be seen sorry cannot be touched that is one of the features for that specific reason a service cannot be compared with the goods directly because there is an intangibility involved there is this heterogeneity which is that it's going to vary always why 
because of the involvement of human the human factor leads to the variability in the service every now and then it is delivered the third thing is the simultaneity with the service is produced and consumed at the same time think about it you are calling a helpline of any specific company let's say you are calling a helpline of a mobile phone operator so if you are calling a helpline of a mobile phone operator what is actually going to happen is try to understand this now the mobile phone operator is going to talk to you they would be producing the service you are listening to them you are consuming the service so the experience of that service is only for some time the experience of that service is only for some time now if the experience for that service is only for a certain period of time that means that you cannot evaluate that service at a later date that is considered to be simultaneity that is considered to be simultaneity the next one of them is the perishability the service cannot be stored think about a restaurant a restaurant has got 10 waiters nobody showed up this morning all 10 waiters would be free the number of visitors who showed up in the afternoon only five waiters were utilized the rest of the five their time cannot be stored in the evening the number of visitors are such that it means 20 waiters so they would be needing extra waiters rather than those 10 waiters serving the customers satisfactorily uh, the these these waiters cannot say that we were free the whole day so we are now going to serve the double number of customers no you cannot do it that time wasn't stored the third one of them is about the ownership when we talk about the concept of ownership so what exactly do we mean by ownership the ownership would actually means that the service cannot be owned by anyone i mean like the title to the service cannot be transferred the title to the service cannot be transferred Yeah, is everyone okay with this? Anyone having any questions here? Perfect. So we have gone through this service also. So generally, this is specific model of building block model was introduced in order to address the needs of the service oriented organizations major. These are the notes which are available to you. You can review them. later okay now the last model that we are going to discuss it's termed as performance pyramid it's termed as performance pyramid so this is another important model with respect to the performance management and i'm going to have a quick discussion about this specific model 
if you could have a look at this specific performance pyramid model you could see the top is vision then this market and financial then there are these three customer satisfaction flexibility productivity the quality delivery cycle time waste etc 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 what does this performance pyramid reflects so the performance pyramid actually reflects let me repeat the performance pyramid actually reflects the three layers of an organization which is the strategic level the tactical level and the operational level Now, basically what happens is the work that is performed at each of these levels is different. The work performed are the small tasks, the operational level tasks are different. The tactical level tasks are different and the strategic level tasks are different. So what the performance pyramid it does is that it says that, see, this is the strategic level, this is the tactical level, and this is the operational level. Let me repeat, this is what the performance management, uh, performance pyramid tool tells you. It says that, look, what happens is, um, the organization has a market related objective and the market related objective could be, could be the market share should increase. This market related objective is achieved when there is this customer satisfaction. The customer satisfaction is when the customer gets the quality goods. The customer satisfaction is when the customer is retained, the satisfaction level is high, etc. And the customer satisfaction is when the customer gets quality goods and the customer gets on time delivery. So basically, what happens is the performance pyramid, what it says is it says that look consider this specific aspect this specific aspect is actually what this is telling you that if you produce quality goods if you deliver them on time then the customers would be happy and if the customers would be happy your market share would increase what happens is you deliver quality goods you deliver them on time the customers would be happy if the customers would be happy, then your market share would increase. The second thing is, it says that the second goal is the financial goal, which is it could be pertaining to per profit, could be the EPS and so on and so forth, etc. Et so what it does is it says that see, the profitability, the EPS, the market value of the company would all increase when the productivity would enhance. Because if the productivity enhances, the cost reduces. And the productivity would enhance when the cycle time would reduce. And when the wastage would be eliminated. So if you keep on focusing on reducing the cycle time of the processes, you keep on reducing cycle time of the processes, you keep on eliminating the waste, your productivity would enhance. If your productivity would enhance, you would be able to achieve the financial objectives. Now, a very important thing. When we talk about this financial objective, market objective, so there comes something called flexibility. We have already studied the flexibility is the responsiveness to change, the speed of delivery, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It's adaptability to the change. So the flexibility needs to be available on both these sides, whether that be on the productivity side, whether that be on the customer side. So now if an organization is able to achieve this 
that means they have achieved external effectiveness. If the organization is able to achieve this, that means they have achieved internal efficiency. So the external effectiveness plus internal efficiency would lead to achievement of the vision. So when we actually implement the performance pyramid in an organization, what we do is that we measure the performance of the entity at these three different levels. This level, this level, this level. And we measure the performance using these four indicators, quality, delivery, cycle time, waste. These indicators, customer satisfaction, flexibility, productivity. These, which is the market and the financial. So obviously what is happening is this and into this, this into this, into this. Ultimately, you would be able to achieve your organization's goal, objective, mission. So this performance pyramid actually tells you how the performance hierarchy should be. Yeah, is that okay to everyone? Is that okay to everyone? Okay, great, good enough. So what we are going to do is we are going to a little fast. Okay, let me repeat. Let me repeat. Don't worry, don't worry. Thank you. Thank you for highlighting. I told you that what happens is an organization can have three different levels. This is usually the operational level. This is the tactical level goals. This is the strategic level goals. So what happens is when you perform well at the operational level, you get results at the strategic level. And if the strategic level results are achieved then the, sorry, tactical level, and then you get the strategic level goals. So we linked it that the performance pyramid, which was originally for a manufacturing organization tells you that if it's an organization, delivers the quality goods to its to its customers delivers them on time delivers them on committed time then the customer satisfaction enhances and when the customer satisfaction enhances the entity's market position strengthens the market share increase the market position improves that's what happens the second thing is if you could reduce the cycle time of the processes that you undertake, whatever process, whatever, manufacturing process, packaging process, customer response process, whatsoever that is. If you could reduce the cycle time of the processes, if you could eliminate the waste that exists, the productivity, which is the efficiency of the organization would enhance, and this would lead to improvement in your financial goals. So hence, what happens is, this is how, when you implement the performance pyramid, you introduce performance measures at each level. You measure each of them. If operational is performing well, the tactical will get goals. If the tactical goals will be achieved, then the strategic goals will be achieved, and hence the vision will be achieved. Is that okay now? Yeah, is that okay now? Mohammed Kayum, are you okay? Okay, what about others? Are you people okay with all this? Yes, it could be used in any industry uh, because even the retail industry, you have got the cycle time, uh, like which is the uh, the retail sector could actually be replenishment of a stock, the arrangement of a stock. There could be many processes. You could just split it. You could just apply to any industry. Okay. So, um, thank you very much, everyone. I would be really happy to have your feedbacks uh, for today's session. Uh,
Yes, Sajid Amit, you can you can ask the question. Don't worry. Yeah, I would be really happy to have your feedback for today's session. That how was the feedback? Any improvements? Any suggestions that you have for tomorrow's session? Uh, let me tell you, tomorrow's session is going to be uh, exam practice session where the exam questions pertaining to all areas that we have discussed today will be covered. Ah uh, well, uh, um, okay. Let me let me let me actually be uh, answering the question to everyone. Uh, answers. Uh, now one of them is basically Mazali. Thank you very much, uh, Sajid. Thank you, um, uh, Sachini. Um, the questions that we are planning to discuss are going to be on these areas of CSF, KPI, these performance management models and all that. Um, further, what happens is, um, uh, we would be Okay, Benjamin, thank you very much. Mohammed Hassan, thank you. Wuhawe, Mutanda, thank you very much. Uh, Tazbiya, thank you very much. Arishan, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for your feedbacks. Thank you for your suggestions. Um, uh, really, really encouraging. And uh, I hope that you all would have joined the WhatsApp group by now. Yes, don't worry, you'll get you'll get to know the questions. Don't worry in advance, you're going, you're going to get the questions. So uh, let's keep it up till now. Inshallah, uh, we'll meet up tomorrow. I'm again uh, sharing the link of the WhatsApp group. Uh, in case if you people have not been able to join, you can get in touch with me on my WhatsApp number. Um, and I'll be I'll be there to answer you all. This is my WhatsApp number. I can add you to the WhatsApp group. Uh, it becomes a bit difficult to answer each and every single student. So it's advisable that uh, you can actually be part of the group so that uh, each one of you can help each other also in my absence also. So thank you very much, everyone. I've shared my number with you people. I hope that uh, it's all okay to everyone. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for your session. I uh, look forward to seeing you all tomorrow, inshallah. Thank you, Maaz. Stanley, it will be available uh, probably tonight. I will be available on the ACC Pakistan channel. I'll share the link on the Vimeo uh, on the group also.